Tibet. An improbable wildlife kingdom. Dominated by China's largest and the world's highest plateau. Flanked by the great Himalayas. Despite extreme radiation and oxygen deprivation, a group of creatures have adapted to survive at high altitude. Great mammals, scavengers, fleet-footed antelopes, cold-blooded reptiles, and even a renegade band of primates. A place also home to an ancient people. Together, they find a way to live on the roof of the world. Tibet's immense frigid plateau is often called the Earth's third pole. Located in China's lower western region, it's buttressed by the Great Himalayas. This land sits at over 4,000 meters. But despite these lofty heights, a diverse group of creatures and their neighbors, the industrious highland people, somehow carve out an existence. Tibet is famed as a place of wonder. Its capital city, Lhasa, is a high-altitude metropolis of contrasts. An ancient cultural center brimming with history, which is quickly evolving into a thoroughly modern city. The plateau surrounding Lhasa and the valleys to the east are blessed with some surprisingly fertile land. And farming is central to life here. The short summer season is exploited to grow ancient and hardy strains of wheat and barley. Here, in the alpine valley of Linzi, the lure of these energy-rich crops proved too much for one opportunistic primate. The Tibetan rhesus macaque. The largest of all rhesus macaques. 20 years ago, a small number came down from the hills to fields surrounding the village. and quickly exploited this ready-made food source. The villagers were in a dilemma. Tibetan custom is to live with all animals in harmony. But these thieves were not welcomed by all. Luckily, one villager took an interest in the monkeys and began feeding them. ビーグミマトンビーグピーグミマトンでで自信めでで
The macaques are built to withstand the harsh solar radiation and extreme low temperatures of winter, when the extra food is particularly welcomed by this large troop. But for now, these primates have their annual respite, as it's summer. Time to enjoy the balmy 20 degree day. Macaques live in a lush alpine valley. The trees here are more than a playground. Its nutrients are important to their survival. Although these macaques are helped by their human neighbors, they must still forage for most of their own food. Unlike some monkeys, these macaques can't digest leaves in great quantities, preferring fruits when available. Only a few trees bear fruit each season. So macaque groups strive to protect their patch at any cost. This green oasis is not typical of the rest of Tibet, where a huge plateau dominates. These alpine forests are a side effect of the Indian monsoon, which makes its way down Tibet's Yaklang Sangpo River, that carved out this gorge three times deeper than the Grand Canyon. Travelling against the winds of the monsoon west along this gorge, and you eventually reach Mount Kailash, one of the Himalayan great peaks. These mountains are home to one of the world's most elusive cats. The snow leopard. Special adaptions allow this big cat to survive here. Large nasal cavities warm the frigid incoming air. Its long, thick tail is used as a counterbalance. While its giant paws act like climbers' crampons, their claws adding extra traction on the slippery rock. The cat's agility allows it to catch two large mammals every month, including the Himalayan wild sheep, known as the boral, which is also adapted to living on these cliffs. It's a game of cat and sheep, played out at almost 6,000 meters. The northeastern side of the Himalayas buttresses the world's highest and largest plateau. It's so high 
that it exists in the Earth's troposphere, where oxygen is only 50% of that found at sea level. But despite the extreme conditions, the grasslands that sit atop of this great plateau still attract some specially adapted grass eaters. The Chiru is the fastest creature here and can reach speeds of 80 kilometers per hour. They have adapted radiation resistant DNA and the ability to function with less oxygen. And like the snow leopard, air sacs in their nostrils warm the air before it hits the lungs. Males have horns half a meter long, which are used to violently fight for the affections of the females. With sometimes lethal consequences. This time, the challenger backs down. For years, this small antelope not only had to fend off rival males and predators, but also had to avoid its greatest foe to date, man. The Chiru possesses the finest wool in the world. Demand for this so-called soft gold was so high that the Chiru was almost hunted to extinction 30 years ago. But the Chiru no longer needs to flee at the sound of man. A government conservation program now employs local people to protect and preserve Chiru and other wildlife on the Great Plateau. Each patrol covers a massive 20,000 square kilometers. And rangers must deal with whatever the extreme plateau throws at them. This data is vital to the conservationists studying the plateau. But working alongside plateau wildlife isn't without its risks. <laughs> Our 
This work goes beyond the mechanics of conservation. The Tibetan people have long had a spiritual connection with wildlife through Buddhism. Respecting all animals is central to their way of life. Female Chiru lived independently of the males for part of the year. And strangely, after mating, migrate on their own to carving grounds hundreds of kilometers away in the north of the plateau. A behavior that scientists are still unable to completely explain. To get there, they have to pass under the Qinghai Tibet Railway. It's the highest altitude railway in the world and is, amazingly, built on permafrost, a permanently frozen layer of earth. Tibet is often referred to as the Earth's third pole. So called because of the vast amounts of ice locked up in glaciers and in these permafrost areas. Not all the water in Tibet is frozen. Countless cold freshwater lakes pepper the plateau. Many originate from melting Himalayan glaciers and permafrost. These lakes are extremely remote. But people can be found, even here. Nomadic herders pass by with their animals. And Buddhist monks find solace in the solitude. Yet these lakes also support vast populations of birds. It's an avian haven. And one bird towers over the rest. The majestic black-necked crane. The only alpine crane in the world. And because of its secluded home, the last to be named by ornithologists. Most cranes have a wingspan of nearly two meters, allowing them to migrate on thermals for thousands of kilometers. But most black-necked cranes don't migrate outside of China. And some live around these lakes all year round. They're attracted by the bounty on offer. Small fish, crustaceans, and even frogs. But this is also a place to rest. The surrounding water acting as a natural alarm to any approaching predators. In spring, temperatures creep up to almost 10 degrees Celsius. There's still snow on the ground but cranes pair off to begin the important task of breeding, producing one or two vulnerable eggs. Both parents are equally committed and share incubation duties. There are less than 6,000 of these birds left, so every egg is precious. 
Oman 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 The cranes are particularly sacred to the lakeside monks. They help to protect the eggs and to conserve the local ecosystems for all of the wildlife here. Every summer, the cranes are joined by a species of goose that makes the greatest and most arduous journey of any migratory bird on Earth over the Himalayas. Bar-headed geese fly nearly 1,600 kilometers from India to these Tibetan lakes. Some birds have even been witnessed to have flown over 8,000 meters, higher than Everest. The oxygen-depleted air means that they have to beat their wings faster and breathe deeper to keep aloft. Luckily, their specialized blood cells help to maximize the reduced oxygen. It's thought that as the Himalayas incrementally rose higher and higher, the geese's instinct took them higher with it. Averaging 20 degrees Celsius, it's just warm enough in the summer to breed in Tibet, up to eight little goslings per pair. Before making the epic return journey to India to avoid the harsh Tibetan winter. Living cheek by jowl with wild animals has its dangers. Overnight, the monks were visited by a Tibetan animal that doesn't just inspire respect, but fear. The Tibetan brown bear. Thank you.